Thank you very much, and welcome to the center of the I'm fuzzy. What happened? <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Maybe a little less reverb in me, Michael. Here we go. That's better. Oh, try that again. Nope. Something's crackly. <clears throat> welcome <laughs> to the Center for Spiritual Living here in beautiful San Clemente. <laughs> Not crackling out there, just crackling in my head. Ah, that's, that's what happens when you have lack of sleep. <laughs> anyway, we're glad you're here this morning, and we'd like you to join us on our first sing-along song, which is, I'm so grateful, very appropriate for the month of November. If you'll please stand up and join us. Here we go. here at the center and it's just such a delight to see all of you because I know that each one of you your presence your soul your heart makes a difference and thank you for sharing it with us this morning so we gather on Sundays to celebrate life to celebrate God to celebrate that expression in through and as each one of us and uh, it looks like so many different things and it could be one religion, it could be another. We honor them all. And so we come together and we begin our service with the lighting of the flames of faith. And we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples, all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence 
which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here this morning. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. And we light the candle for Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Joanne Leone lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here today. And let's take in that, that consciousness of unity and and go into prayer and know, know deep down inside that that power and that presence is all that there is in each one of us, in all of life, wherever we are, that, that awesome power exists, creating, creating, creating out of itself the love and the peace and the harmony and the joy the abundance, the wholeness that is our inherent nature. And I know that each one of us is an extension of that one. We are one with it. And we are one with each other. And as we each come together today in that consciousness of, consciousness of unity and love and, and connection, we experience something beautiful. This time together is blessed. It is expansive. It reveals something, something to each one of us. And we are each raised and praised by knowing the truth of ourselves, the truth of everyone here, the truth of everyone we know and don't know. That connection, that connection to life. And so as we celebrate this, as we celebrate through this message and the community and the, and the music, we simply uh, take it all in and remember who we are. And so I give great thanks for this. I give great thanks for each beautiful soul here and for this time together that blesses the world. And so I simply let go. I know that my words have been spoken and therefore are already done. And please join me in saying, and so it is. And now I'd like to invite up to the platform. Oh, he's already here, Aiden Green. Ta-da. Good morning. Good morning. Let's say our declarations of principle together. I believe in God, 
the one creative intelligence, operating through the universe and operating throughout our entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon the law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And our affirmation. Today, I remember to give thanks in everything, even in this. As good as my life is, it can be better. When looking toward our self-created prison of limitations, I see the best you look up and see the stars. I give thanks for the infinite possibilities, and so it is. Thank you, Aiden. And please welcome the Jules Tone Choir. to acknowledge that our guest pianist this morning, Jules Vogel. And so happy that you're here to hear the work of our wonderful choir. We rehearse every Thursday night through thick and through thin, <laughs> through sickness and health. <laughs> and I'm so grateful for all these loving hearts and wonderful voices. And we are going to be working next on our holiday music, and we're looking for people that read music to play chimes. So if you are such a person that you don't feel like singing, but you read music and can play a chime, find me after the service. Meanwhile, we're going to magnify the light. <laughs> Magnify the light, signify the way. 
right. Yes. She just did it, and we accepted it, and so it is. Oh, yes. <laughs> my, my message this morning, as we continue our gratitude, uh, our whole emphasis on gratitude and blessing and being blessed, my message today is even this. And it comes just like it said on the, on the uh, affirmation that I wrote, it comes from scripture. Thessalonians 5, verse 8, which says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, not for everything, not because we're so happy for everything, but in everything, give thanks. In other words, have that attitude of gratitude at all times. Don't let it depend on what's going on in your life. Don't let it depend on, okay, the good is happening, now I'll be grateful. That's too late. <laughs> Start with it. Be, let it fill you. That is who you are. The presence and power of the divine is in you. There could be nothing better than that. And life will have its ups and downs, its, um, its challenges. So I'll just start off with a challenge to you. What is the meaning of flea bitten? Shout it out, shout it out. Bitten by fleas, scratched old, old and worn out. Beleaguered. Pardon? Beleaguered. Beleaguered. Now, I just checked with Merriam-Webster. I like, I prefer that dictionary goal, although in, in the dictionary.com, all of those definitions were given, starting with shabby. Starting with shabby. Well, here's the thing. It really does mean bitten by fleas, and your minister, the one standing up here, is flea bitten. <laughs> so take whatever meaning you would like that fits for you. I'm big enough. I can take it. Because <laughs> I, know, I know I am not shabby, because I am one with that power and presence, one with the, with the thing itself. <coughs> one with the law, one with the love, one with the power, just like each one of you is. And I happen to have kittens that have uh, attracted a whole house full of fleas. Oh. Now, how, how they are is they don't like the fleas. So they, they go across the carpet like that, sipping so that they, or they go across jumping from piece of furniture to piece of furniture which I was cross with when I, until I realized they don't want to step on the carpet. So they relegated themselves into the kitchen. So now my kitchen has two litter boxes and <laughs> four food dishes, and it really does look like it's um, part of the shelter. <laughs> Not the, the whole the shelter for people, but the shelter for animals. And it's okay. It's okay. It's what I signed up for when I adopted these two kittens. I signed up for looking after them. As Kathy reminded me, I'm their guardian caretaker. I'm not their mother, although I like being their mother. <laughs> I like being that um, presence that holds them, loves them, and sometimes other things are required. So, you know, we, in San Clemente, we're very blessed by having, there's a veterinarian that will come to your house. Oh and because my wow. kitties are very shy, especially one of them, I think he was a feral cat before he was uh, uh, fostered at the, at the shelter. But anyway, he's very, very shy and he's very smart. And as soon as he sees someone, so not Smokey, the other one, <laughs> the, the buzz, he just, Go. So the vet, knowing that this would likely happen, gave me some Xanax for cats. It isn't really Xanax, but it's for the same thing. It's to calm the cats, to make them so relaxed that they could care less who else is there. So, um, and you have to start the night before, give them one dose the night before, and then another dose in the morning of. So Thursday night was my task was to give one dose. Well, <laughs> neither of them want this, even though the vet says it tastes just like chicken. <laughs> my cats know it tastes like medicine. They go, no, 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 we don't want that. You get it close to them, it's in a little syringe. 
so I finally could come around the side and squeeze it into their mouth and, and got the Thursday, and they just sort of relaxed a little bit, but I really didn't get all 100 milliliters in. It got probably 90. So Friday morning at 6 o'clock, I started with the easy one. Yet I got, actually got the whole 100 milliliters in, and that was fine. It took me until almost 7 until I got the other one. And then I waited for the vet. I waited for the vet. I waited oh. for the vet. I waited oh. for the vet. Oh. And about 9.30, they started getting <laughs> anxious or something. They started, so I knew they needed another <laughs> shot. So I thought, OK, at least they're kind of relaxed right now. I can probably do it. And I did. And then now we have two kittens that are just about sleeping. <laughs> And the vet's assistant calls me and says, we're on our, we're at our last other call, we're on our way, put the kittens in the, when, when I get there, I'll phone you, and you can put them in the bathroom. So, of course, as soon as she phoned and I tried to move, uh, they both scattered. So we have that drama going on again. But meanwhile, before this happened, because there already was anxiety, because these, um, these cats were trained, they were litter trained before they even came to me. And um, as I was sitting there cuddling one of them, the other one got on my bed and had an accident. And I started to clean it up and I thought, no, this could be really good because this could be a sample for the vet to use, and that's exactly what he said. You mean there's a sample? I said, yes, there is. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Sent my assistant in to get it. So, but here's the other thing that happens. My, my one, my, my lover boy cat, whose name is Smokey, he likes to crawl up my arm to my neck and then sling himself into my arms. <laughs> and he's heavy, but he, when I got him, he's, with 3.7 pounds, now he's about 12 pounds. Oh. So slinging himself into my arm is, means I need to develop more muscle. So he slung himself into my arms, and, and then Buzz, who had never comes onto my lap, because he's still timid, even with me, comes and let me pet him and, and um, brush him, but he actually came while I was holding Smokey, came, and I said, come on, come on, with my other hand, and he came onto my lap. So now my dreams have come true. <laughs> Both of these guys are so happy. Mind you, had, they had two shots of sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that happy, which I don't really approve of, but <laughs> they're so happy, and I'm so happy, and then the vet comes, and he does all the things, and, and remember, my main thing was to get flea medicine for them. And he says, well, I've done so much because I gave them shots and I gave them antibiotics and you shouldn't do any, we shouldn't do it today. But I'll leave you the medicine. And this one goes on the back of the yeah. neck. So I'm knowing that by <coughs> next Sunday, I won't have a flea bitten story anywhere to tell you <laughs> that it's going to be completely it's gone, so completely gone. <laughs> And that they can stay relaxed without medication, just like you and I can stay relaxed. I've been trying to teach them to meditate. I meditate every day. All of my cats have always meditated with me. Any cat lovers in here that the cats look wet and see? Yeah, yeah, because they, they feel that energy of acceptance, of peace. And it's a wonderful energy. It's a wonderful energy. And so that's one of the reasons in everything give thanks. So you capture that energy, the energy of the life of God in you. That's the energy. You're capturing it. How do you do it? Practice, practice, practice. It's like any other spiritual practice. In preparation for this, I was reading, um, I was reading some blogs, not, not mine, but I was reading some other blogs, and a woman was writing, she was a minister's wife, 
and she was writing about this, this scripture and how important it had been in her life. She said um, they, they had a good life and they practiced, they family of six, so she and her husband and four children had practiced gratitude for years and years. It was kind of natural and still difficult to do when things happen. So the unpleasant thing that happens is that some of the congregation got together and forced out the minister, the senior minister, her husband. So in other words, he lost his job. And that caused lots of things to happen. They lost their house. They had to move into an apartment for a two-bedroom apartment for all six of them. And she said, it was difficult to remain grateful, but I knew how important it was. In fact, I practiced more to be grateful because I could have gone into bitterness or anger or revenge or any of those things. And this was not a new thought minister. This was a regular Christian minister writing about the scripture. And she said, or minister's wife, she said she was so glad that she continued because their life eventually, within a few years, was better than it had been. Mm -hmm. She said, in fact, it was so good, I thought of writing thank you notes to all of those people that forced my husband to lose his job, but she did it. She didn't do it. So what are the, what are the things that are your even this? Where, what are the things for you that you can call yourself to be grateful even in this? Even now, even at this time, it could be a job loss. It could be a diagnosis. It could be uh, uh, issues with your, with your friendships. It could be a misunderstanding that seems hard to reconcile. But whatever it is, what I encourage each one of us to do is be steadfast to the principle that God is everywhere present. And being everywhere present, meaning within you, is always responding. Always, always, always responding to you, to the sum total of your consciousness. So that means your thoughts and especially your feelings. Whatever you're feeling is getting, going to get expressed is going to be expressed. Now be grateful because so much of what you're feeling is really good and you want that to be expressed. And then notice if there are places where you're being triggered in your life to blame or judge or condemn. And if you are, that's part of your even this. Even this. All of you have heard of Oprah Winfrey, I know. Well, I think she's one of the richest women in America, but whether she is the richest or not one of or close to, I want to read you uh, something she said about gratitude. She practiced gratitude for years and years before we ever saw her on television. And she said this, she wrote this, and it's in a book I'm going to talk about. This book is The Magic by uh, Rhonda Buren, who's the creator of The Secret. So she said, Oprah says this, I started out giving thanks for small things. And the more thankful I became, the more my bounty increased. That's because what you focus on expands. And when you focus on the goodness in your life, you create more of it. Opportunities, relationships, even money flowed my way. When I learned to be grateful, no matter what happened in my life. No matter what happened in my life. Oprah proved that the principle of gratitude, the principle that's a multiplier of good and greater good. So, what can you do if you haven't even this? I recommend, I really love this book. Thank you, Aiden, who gave it to me. Thought it would be good for me to uh, realize, because. I watched The Secret many times when it came out, and then I was kind of tired of it. 
because it's only, the secret is a part of the science of mind. It's not the whole thing, but it's a part. It captures a part really well. So I was kind of reluctant, but it's a very good book. Great, perfect practices. I'm going to teach you the first one. The first one is um, every night to make a list of 10 things that you're grateful for. I am grateful for, but then it doesn't start, stop there. I am grateful for this congregation because if, they, if I didn't have them, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> I am grateful for my health because it allows me to enjoy my life. You see what I'm doing? <coughs> for every single one, you say, why? What's the reason for that gratitude? 10 things, and then what's the reason? And what I know is it will change. Every day that you do it, there's going to be additional things or another way of looking at it. Um, and probably 10 different things. It doesn't have to be the same 10 things. Whatever it is will be perfect. And then when you finish that list, you simply reread it. And for each one, you say, thank you, thank you, thank you. There, she calls it the magic, because truly gratitude does seem like magic. It multiplies our good, and it blesses us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then there's a very simple last part, and there are way more practices than that. There's many, many, many good practices. But just for today, for your even this, thank you, thank you, thank you, and then at the end of the day, you get your gratitude rock, which I had to put mine away because my kitties like to be at my bedside table and they, they knock everything off. But anyway, I know where it is. So, so the end of the day, you hold that rock and you think back over the day to the very best thing that happened to you. The very best thing that you noticed or that you experienced. And to say what that thing is, thank you, thank you, thank you for the health of my kittens. Thank you, thank you, thank you for my beloved Karen Allen, whose birthday we were celebrating the other night. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this wonderful music that I knew we'd be enjoying this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's it, that's it. There are more, and if they all have that, those magic words in them. How many of you weren't taught the magic words? Say the magic word. Please and thank you. Yeah, please and thank you. Yeah. We've known this for a long time, and sometimes we forget how powerful a practice it is. But I see how beautiful you are. I heard how beautiful you sing. It is a powerful practice. Do it. And so it is. Yes. Yes. Now I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for all of those times that it feels like this thing is too much. And for all of those times when we know that God, that thing itself that sings, is everywhere present. So this is what I know is true. I know that this thing is all-knowing. I know that it is infinite wisdom. I know that it is unconditioned and unconditional love, that it is that first cause of all creation, the, that which is without beginning and without end. It is infinite and eternal, and it is pure love. And it, lo it loves each one of us because it loves itself. So in this holy moment, I consciously unify with it. I remind myself I am one with that. And that that I am is good and very good. That would, that I am is singing the music of the universe, singing the truth of life. 
is bold and free and powerful. That that I am is infinite still. And so today, I boldly and humbly give great gratitude for my whole life, all of it, even that. Every particle of it, every every failed attempt, every thing I criticize myself for, everything, anything I criticize others for, even that, I give thanks for it all. Because the giving thanks blesses the good out of it. I know that this is a day of new beginnings. This is a day of that all-powerful presence within me coming forth and being seen, being heard, and knowing itself as a life, as love, as power, as truth. I am that I am. I am grateful for absolutely everything. I'm grateful for my perfect health. I'm gr grateful for my prosperity. I'm grateful for my creativity. I'm grateful for the flow of energy that is life itself. And with my love, my heart overflowing with gratitude, I simply release this word to the action of law. The law of mind has it, it's done, it's complete. And please help me anchor it by saying with me, and so it is. And now the Jewel Tones Choir. called All Things Bright and Beautiful. And one of my favorite authors is James Harriet, who wrote all those wonderful animal books. All creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, all things bright and beautiful. So we share this with you as a blessing and a prayer. <clears throat> Oh, oh, oh. 
much. Yes, choir is staying because we're going to do something special at offertory. My back. <laughs> if the stewards would please come forward, it's time for us to share our gifts, our tithes, our offerings. And how we do it is we're saying our prosperity affirmation together. And, and then um, we'll take a few seconds of gratitude to practice what we've just been thinking, grateful for all of the good in our lives. And then um, and then we're going to sing together something I love. I send my love. And then the choir's going to do something wonderful. Please join me. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply.
proud of this choir. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, Jordan, you worked so hard. and that particular piece was written by a team of singer songwriters that have been here in Sunford before. That's Jan Garrett and J.D. Martin. Oh, wow. So they did that beautiful song, um, the Rain Song, and this one. So thank you, choir. Yeah. I'd like to acknowledge those of you who have been in service today. So that, of course, includes our coal fire and any of you who have been in service this week. And then if the practitioners who remain standing, the practitioners are trained in the art and science of affirmative prayer. If you want your life transformed, make it a pleasure to see one of these people today. You'd be so happy that you did. The people in service today are Patrick Freeman, Joanne Leone, and Aiden Greeny. Stop by and see one of these wonderful people and have your life transformed, or at least get a taste of that. Let's acknowledge our practitioners. <laughs> There's something else I've been meaning to be grateful for and tell you all about a few weeks ago, um, Dr. Patricia Crandall and her husband, Rick Nichols, did a wonderful workshop on Louise Hay's work, and of course they gave that whole thing to us as a gift, but also they left some books for us in the bookstore, so please go and purchase a gift, a book. They're great books, they're easy to read, and they're in the bookstore. <coughs> We'd be so grateful if you did, so let's acknowledge them. <laughs> If you're visiting us for the very first time, we have a small gift for you and some information about our center. And all you need to do is indicate that to you by either standing up, if you're really brave, or putting your hand up in the air if you're somewhat brave. <laughs> okay, so not seeing anyone unless I miss somebody. Let's acknowledge ourselves. Let's acknowledge <laughs> ourselves. So please, please repeat after me. Something wonderful is happening today. Something, Something wonderful, wonderful is happening today. today. It's this thing called me. It's, it's this, this thing, thing called me. me. I am that light. I am that light. I am that truth. I am, I am that, that truth. And so it is. And so it is. All right. Do we have an announcement? Indeed we do. So join Conscious Connection right here in the sanctuary to talk about today's service. What wonderful topic. Um, it meets from 12 to 12.30. 12 um, child care is available. This week at Wednesday's Wisdom, Reverend Judy will elaborate on our teachings by presenting What is Science of Mind? Come at 7 p.m. and gain some more insight into what it is we teach and discuss here and get some Judaism. <laughs> And then the following Wednesday is our Thanksgiving Eve service. And this is a beautiful time where we get to come together as a spiritual community and share our gratitude and our sweets. And so plan to be here with a dessert and share, invite your friends and family. We have great music by the fabulous Michael Whitney who's back there in our sound booth today. It's from seven to eight. As you've been hearing over the past few weeks, if you've been listening, December 8th is our annual holiday boutique and brunch. It's coming up quickly. For those of you who would like to sell your beautiful handmade creations, please sign up on the kiosk. And for the rest of us, prepare to get some holiday shopping done and enjoy a meal with your spiritual community. You'll have the opportunity to buy some unique gifts not found in stores and support your creative spiritual brothers and sisters. And then mark your calendar on Sunday, December 22nd. Michael Paul Smith will be here for the service and he will be presenting a Christmas concert afterwards. So plan to stay that day. This is going to be presented on a love offering basis and what a great way to get in the Christmas spirit. There's always so much going on here at CSLCV, so take your inserts home with you and look it over. And now, the children. Release the children. <laughs> Thank you. 